Yohanan, John chapter 19. Then, therefore, Pilate took Yeshua and flogged him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and placed it on his head. And they put a purple robe on him and came to him and said, Greeting, sovereign of the Yehudim. And they slapped him in the face. And Pilate went outside again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no guilt in him. Then Yeshua came outside wearing a crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said to them, See the man. So when the chief priests and officers saw him, they shouted, saying, Impale, impale. Pilate said to them, You take him and impale him, for I find no guilt in him. The Yehudim answered him, We have a law, and according to our law, he ought to die, for he has made himself the son of Elohim. So when Pilate heard this word, he was more afraid, and went back into the palace and asked Yeshua, From where are you from? But Yeshua gave him no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I possess authority to impale you, and I possess authority to release you? Yeshua answered, You would possess no authority against me if it were not given you from above. Because of this, he who delivered me to you has greater sin. From then on, Pilate was seeking to release him. But the Yehudim shouted, saying, If you release this one, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a sovereign does speak against Caesar. Therefore, when Pilate heard these words, he brought Yeshua out and sat down in judgment seat in a place that is called uh, pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation day of the Pesach week, and about the sixth hour, and he said to the Yehudim, See your sovereign. But they shouted, Away, away, impale him. Pilate said to them, Shall I impale your sovereign? The chief priest answered, We have no sovereign except Caesar. At that time, then he delivered him to be, he delivered him to them to be impaled, and they took Yeshua and led him away. And bearing his stake, he went out to the so-called place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where they impaled him, and two others with him, one on this side and one on that side, and Yeshua in the middle. And Pilate wrote a title too and put it on the stake, and it was written, Yeshua of Nazareth, the sovereign of the Yehudim. Many of the Yehudim therefore read this title, for the place where Yeshua was impaled was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Greek, in Roman. So the chief priests of the Yehudim said to Pilate, Do not write the sovereign of the Yehudim, but he said, I am the sovereign of the Yehudim. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had impaled Yeshua, took his outer garments and made four parts, to each soldier a part, and the inner garment. But the inner garment was without seam, woven from the top in one piece. So they said to each other, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. The soldiers therefore indeed did this. And by the stake of Yeshua stood his mother and his mother's sister, Miriam the wife of Clopha, and Miriam from Magdala. When Yeshua, seeing his mother and the taught one whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, see your son. Then to the taught one he said, See your mother. And from that hour, that taught one took her to his own home. After this, Yeshua, knowing that all had been accomplished in order that the scripture might be accomplished, said, <clears throat> I thirst. A bowl of sour wine stood there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop, and held it to his mouth. So when Yeshua took the sour wine, he said, It has been accomplished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Therefore, since it was the preparation day that the body should not remain on the stake on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high one, the Yehudim asked Pilate to have their legs broken 
and that they be taken away. Therefore the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and of the other who was impaled with him. But when they came to Yeshua and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and instantly blood and water came out. And he who has seen has witnessed, and his witness is true, and he knows that the that he is speaking the truth, in order that you might believe. For this took place in order for the scripture to be filled, not one of his bones shall be broken. And again another scripture says, They shall look on him whom they pierced. And after this, Yosef of Ramathayim, being the taught one of Yeshua, but secretly, for fear of the Yehudim, asked Pilate that he might take the body of Yeshua, and Pilate gave permission. Therefore he came and took the body of Yeshua. And Nakdimon, who at first came to Yeshua by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pounds. Then they took the body of Yeshua and bound it in linen wrappings with the spices, as was the habit of the Yehudim for burial. And at the place where he was impaled, there was a garden, and in the garden a fresh tomb in which no one had yet been laid. There then, because of the preparation day of the Yehudim, they laid Yeshua, because the tomb was near.